What does this creature want? Is it dangerous? Does it have something I can eat? Is it coming after me? Are we mating? As long as we honor the ancestor and nature's spirits, they will take care of us. Pay attention to signs, pay proper tribute, worship emblems, statues, graves, and totems, carry medicines and amulets, make sacrifices, follow the old ways, chant and sing sacred names, perform rituals and dances. These are all forms of magic that protect us from harm. The only person in the world that you can trust is yourself. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. Do what you have to do. Look out for number one. Be ruthless. They would do the same to you. Only the strong survive. If you are not the strongest, you serve the strongest. The weak serve and obey the powerful. It's just the fact of the matter. Good people respect authority and follow the law. They are humble, faithful, simple, and devout. Bad people have lost their way and need to be punished so they can learn to follow the rules. The rules are good and true and right. We are the people who follow the rules. We fight for what we believe in and we make sure that everyone knows what the rules are. Everyone in the world will have to join us sooner or later as we're the best people who are right about everything and those who disagree with us are the enemies of the God of the universe. The world is logical and reasonable and can be understood directly. Reasonable people can coexist simply by not violating one another's equal rights to be treated with basic fairness and respect. Progress and growth are the inevitable result of education, logic, and high self-esteem. Intelligence and ability result when a person is free to explore their own passions and interests and taught that all people are equally capable of being anyone they want and doing anything they want with their life. The world is interpreted into being. A person or a society is whatever it imagines itself to be. Our interpretive systems rest upon a foundation of privilege and absurd delusion. What we call progress is also the destruction of the environment, the collapse of values, a lifestyle of alienation, depression, angst, an existence which is most likely doomed to war, disaster, and collapse. All of the various perspectives need to be brought into the discussion before we can call it any sort of real dialogue. Our own personal flaws are the true tragedy of the story. There is much that we must work through in our own selves, in our own culture, but the world really does need our help. We're losing species, we're losing the rainforests, we're losing human rights and freedoms, we're going to run out of drinking water, and we're all a bunch of narcissistic babies. We are poisoning ourselves. We must change, morally, our own selves, our own families, our own cultures. The change must come from here, from within. Be a part of the solution. The various interpretations of reality outlined thus far fit into a system of philosophical emergence which matches my own quest for knowledge. In general, the philosophical views that people hold are conglomerated repetitions of resonating mimetic complexes that a person bases their personal identity around, a set of preferences concerning what is considered to be true and meaningful and real among all the various options. A person selects their worldview from the little handful available and then they deny all the others. But this makes people incompatible with one another. If you simply accept all of these worldviews at once, as partial truths and pieces of a larger puzzle, then you will be comprehending everybody. You can help guide people towards the proper direction from there. What we experience as a self experiencing a world can also be thought of as a mimetic megastructure, a multifaceted conglomerate entity manifesting in all of reality at once within the replicated construct of intelligent, self-aware consciousness generated by your brain and body, generated by your environment, generated by your society, generated by your mind, all working in concert with one another manifesting as a subjective experience occurring in awareness, manifesting as an objective fact, an event that is measurable in physical reality. My experience of that event is interpreted through the lens of my cultural conditioning, everything I've been taught in my life. It can be communicated from me to you and then become something in your own mind which is fundamentally different from whatever it is that is actually shared between us in the intersubjective space existing as we develop our relationship between one another through communication. 
It becomes a public reality through the public's interpretation of what I reveal to it through the documented public fact that I have communicated this to you in this objective event right now. Our capacity to comprehend one another rests upon the social infrastructure and historical moment in which you and I find ourselves. These are all different perspectives on a single thing. The dividing lines are imaginary. Everything is occurring in all four quadrants at once, being interpreted through a state and various lines at various stages and various typologies. It's hard to actually talk about reality at all without including at least all of those factors into the discussion. This is the most stable, mature, healthy, up-to-date version of comprehending reality which exists at this time. This day-to-day -day waking realm of unconscious habit and unresolved yearning is only one realm that exists. There are visionary realms where other truths are revealed, and these will alter your comprehension of reality itself. You are not what you think you are. You are a spiritual entity. You have the ability to train yourself to see into other realms and experience mystical transcendent states. You find yourself having moments where you lose yourself, forget who you are, and just become a moment in time, one with the environment and the cosmos. In this state, it feels that you have discovered a precious knowledge, a gemstone of wisdom, a deeper truth than that which you are accustomed to. But you can't quite place what it is. Is it normal for a human mind to have visions that are so profound and powerful and detailed? Why does nobody talk about this? I feel like I'm waking up from a trance, a coma even, that I have been stuck in most of my life that I have been sleeping. I hope that I'm not losing my mind. The world of our daily conscious waking lives is but a shadow of the rich, articulate harmony of an infinite conscious cosmos hidden within the silence of the mind. People of strictly flesh will always want more, more, never understanding the nature of this core addiction, this core inadequacy, this yearning without name. If only you could see that you have become alien from your own heart, from your own divine nature, which you can directly experience and visit and which can reveal a more powerful truth than any bliss or any peace you've ever felt or known. And this is quite simply nothing more or less than you casting off your attachments and your ego and experiencing that which has always been desired a return home, a resolution to the dissonance, a letting go of troubles. All of worry and fear, all of conflict and doubt are due to mistaken identity. You have forgotten the true nature of yourself. You have become convinced that the story of your life is your identity and your nature, but actually, you were here prior to that. You are here always. You are never born and you never died. If you haven't yet seen or realized this, there is nothing else worth knowing or seeing, because until you've been here, and unless you are here now, you will believe yourself to be a prisoner, trapped in the stream of time, in the delusion of a personal identity and ego, in the story and relationships of an imaginary stranger, in samsara and illusion and sorrow and suffering, the world where you are given gifts and then the gifts are taken away. You are not free until you are experiencing only pure consciousness in the present moment. But this is always so. Buddha nature is here, everywhere, always, ever present. We return now here to the current state of that which is arising. And still we are only consciousness, only light, only the energetic bliss of creation, Buddha nature, Christ consciousness, only here now, forever, always, without beginning or end. This moment is the divine moment, this self, the self of Godhead. As we expand into each quadrant, each line, each level we engage with every type, we activate every level, every interaction, every perspective in every being. Nothing has ever happened. There is only one experience. There is no story. You are radically free of this constructed reality. <laughs>